Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anand Abraham, back to its new channel, Dentistry and More, and I'm so happy to be part of it. I'll be taking some of the lectures in orthodontics. Thank you. Today we are going to discuss about skeletal maturity indicators, which is one of the most important topic in orthodontics. So I will be covering this topic under following headings. One is clinical importance of skeletal maturity indicator, different method to assess the skeletal maturity, indication for the hand wrist radiograph, anatomy of hand wrist, and various methods to assess the skeletal maturity. Every individual matures differently. Due to individual variations in timing, duration, and velocity of growth, skeletal age assessment is essential in formulating viable orthodontic treatment plan. So, the assessment of skeletal maturity is very important for diagnosis, treatment goals, treatment planning, and outcome of orthodontic treatment. Coming to the clinical importance of skeletal maturity indicators, it helps to evaluate the physical maturity and a characteristic pattern of an ossification progression. It also helps to evaluate the extent of active growth or any remaining growth during treatment period. So, if you are getting the patient at the right age, and when the patient is at the growth spurt stage, we always can correct the patient's profile with different functional appliance depending upon the cases. So in this case, we can see the patient is having a convex profile and a vertical growth pattern. So we try to correct it by a high pull headgear with a twin block, that is vertical twin block. And in this case, again, patient is having a convex profile and a tronatic mandible. Just try to correct it with the frankel appliance. So these portions we will be covering in the functional appliance section. The next clinical importance is to assess the growth status in orthodontic patients. That is because we always need to confirm that the growth has been completed and then surgery has to be performed. Otherwise the thing is that uh, if patient is having a late macular growth that always can affect the stability of the treatment results and it can cause some amount of relapse. So, to assess that, we always need to assess the skeletal maturity of the patients that growth has been completed and then surgery has to be performed. This patient who had a class 3 profile, we did some pre-surgical orthodontics and then surgery had been performed after assessing the growth status of the patient. So, we can see the change of profile from concave to straight profile and uh, this result is relatively stable because uh, we did the surgery after the growth had been completed. When coming to the different methods to assess the skeletal maturity, one is height, weight, chronological age, sexual maturation, frontal sinus, pyrological age or physiological age, handless maturity, cervical vertebrae, dental eruption and dental calcification stages, and biomarkers. Today we are going to deal with handless maturity. When coming to the indication for the handless radiograph, one is the patients who exhibit a major discrepancy between dental and chronologic age. The other one is to predict the pubertal growth spurt. The next one is prior to the treatment of skeletal malocclusion such as skeletal class 2 or class 3 in a growing patient as we seen that in the previous pictures and discussion. Indicated in patients with skeletal malocclusion needing orthognathic surgery. This again we have discussed to predict the future skeletal maturation rate and status and to study the role of heredity, environment, and nutrition on the skeletal maturation. Okay. Coming to the anatomy of hand wrist, we can divide hand wrist into phalanges, metacarpals, carpals, and distal end of long bones, which is nothing but radius and ulna. Then over to carpals, we can divide carpals into distal and a proximal row, which consists of eight small bones, and each appears in a predictable pattern. You can see over here. And we can always remember this code because uh, this is one of the important questions in MCQ uh, exams. Okay, over to metacarpals, we can divide uh, it into five miniature long bonds which form the framework of palm of hand. Okay, over to phalanges, we can divide phalanges into distal, middle, and proximal phalanges. And all the fingers have uh, three phalanges except the thumb, which don't have middle phalanges. Okay, now we need to discuss some basic terms that we need to know. One is epiphysis and one is diaphysis. Epiphysis is nothing but the rounded edges of the long bone over here. 
and diaphysis is nothing but the long mid section of the long form so between epiphysis and diaphysis we can always put it as a term like metaphysis and uh, this is considered to be the growth plate so what we need to know the terms are like epiphysis and diaphysis because uh, with this we just need to know the stages in ossification of the phalanges because in stage 1 it is to be considered as with the epiphysis and diaphysis are equal that we can see over here in the next stage what we can see it is over here it is that uh, it can cap this epiphysis will cap the diaphysis over here and in stage 3 we can see there is complete fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis and we can't see any differentiation between what is epiphysis and what is diaphysis okay come to the last part of the anatomy of hand wrist what we need to know is this sesamoid bone it appears as a small nodular bone that is in the region of the thumb and uh, the appearance of this bone is having a great clinical significance in orthodontics So this is how the anatomy of handrest look like uh, when the kid is around one year. You can see epiphysis just started appearing, and uh, you can see some carpal bones. And when kid is around three years of age, we can see uh, some more carpal bones. Then after that, uh, we can clearly appreciate the uh, epiphysis. And uh, when she reaches around eighteen years of age, we can see there is complete fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis. And we can see all the carpal bones, the so small bones over here. So based on the appearance of uh, different bones uh, what we have previously discussed different methods have been employed to assess the skeletal maturity using hand wrist radiograph these are the most commonly used methods uh, one is atlas method one is a method by jaw gray brown one is fishman's uh, hack and hunger method singers method so what we going to discuss is all about uh, jaw gray and brown method which is uh, one of the most commonly used methods that is used in orthodontics So coming to jaw gray and brown method they have divided skeletal development into nine stages and each of these stages represent a level of skeletal maturity So coming to stage 1 we can see that epiphysis and diaphysis of the proximal phalanges of the index finger are equal and we can put it as a chord like PP2 and it always occurs 3 years before the peak of pubertal growth spurt So coming to the stage 2 we can see epiphysis and diaphysis of the medial phalanx of the middle finger are equal we can code it as a mp3 and it can be noticed prior to the beginning of pubertal growth spurt in stage 3 there are three different ossification areas one is a pisis stage where there is ossification of pisiform we can appreciate uh, this from this figure then after that h1 stage where there is ossification of hamula process of hamate then uh, our stage where epiphysis and diaphysis of radius are equal stage 4 uh, we can see two different stages uh, one is uh, a stage where there is appearance of ulna as a small bone of the thumb that's the smallest nodular bone then after that uh, it's two stage where there is increased ossification of hamula process of the hamate this stage is very important because it marks the beginning of pubertal growth spurt and uh, we can always expect to see this stage in males around 13 years of age and females around 10 and a half years of age okay. in stage 5 we can see capping of diaphysis by the epiphysis in three different uh, areas uh, one we can see that in the middle phalanx of the third finger one in the proximal phalanx of the thumb and uh, one in the radius so we can use this code as mp3 cap pp1 cap and r cap In stage six, we can see the union between epiphysis and diaphysis of the distal phalanx of the middle finger, that is DP3. We can uh, name it as, and uh, this stage uh, constitute the end of pubertal growth spurt. That we can always see, approximately in males around 15 years of age and females around 13 years of age. Seven, we can see a year after pubertal growth spurt. Here we can see there is a union of epiphysis and diaphysis of the proximal phalanx of the little finger, that is PP5. stage 8 we can see there is fusion between the epiphysis and diaphysis of the middle phalanx of the middle finger that can call it as mp3 coming to the last stage uh, there we can see the end of skeletal growth with the fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis of the radius in females uh, we can see it around 16 years of age and in males around uh, 18 and a half years of age 
Okay, that completes the nine stages uh, that is given by Joe Grieve and Brown. This method is very easy, and uh, there are different methods that is given by different authors, and you all can stick to one method. So to conclude, the best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. I hope everybody understood, and in case if any doubt, you always can get back to us. I really thank Dr. Zahi to give this opportunity. I hope everyone is fine, and uh, stay safe. All the wishes, and uh, thank you.